Natasha Tenis, and today I'm interviewing here in London Michael Bellek. You were three times German Football Player of the Year and you played for nothing less than the best clubs in the world, among which Chelsea and Bayern Munich. You were top goal scorer in the history of the German national team. You scored 41 goals. As a midfield player, what is the key to your success? Hard work, discipline, um, a little bit talent as well. Mostly it was a lot of training, focusing on my sport. It was my passion since I was very young. Did someone ever tell you you couldn't do it? I just got a big injury when I was 16 and uh, I was out from football uh, for over a year. So I had a big surgery, a cartilage surgery on the knee. And uh, when I woke up uh, after the surgery, the doctor told me that it's finished with your career. So you can't play professional football anymore. And yeah, I was a little bit in tears, of course, when I was young. Uh, I thought my dream is gone to, to become a professional football player. But with the support, again, from my parents and the club and coaches, I went through this difficult situation and I was back with 17 on the pitch. My knee was fine, and, but it was, was a hard and tough time. You're also captain of the German national team. What do you think are the greatest skills of leaders? I mean, it was a growing process, you know. When I was young, of course, I looked up to, to other big players and I learned a lot from them. And uh, yeah, when I become uh, bigger and bigger, more important for my team. And um, in 2004, I become a German captain from the national team. Uh, of course, you, you're not just focused on your own um, game, you're focused even more on the, on the teamwork and team play. It was a new responsibility for me, uh, which I loved because uh, that's a really, really special situation to lead uh, your national team as a captain. Uh, it was a great experience, and, uh, but I had great players next to me as well. They, they helped me a lot. For what are the characteristics to be a leader? To be sometimes a little bit hard to yeah. yourself, but also to your teammates as well, because you need to be focused. And uh, there are a lot of characteristics in one team, 25, 30 players, which yeah, are everyone is different yeah. and uh, they need to be they can't lose the target you know and uh, they, there are a few players they are on top of the hierarchy and that's important also for the young players unexperienced players yeah. to to show them uh, how it works I learned it when I was young and uh, then I want to give it to the young players as well so it's a natural process Jose Mourinho is probably a great example of a great leader. What do you think were his best skills? Yeah, first I have to say his personality. Yeah. I mean, you can't learn something like he has, you know, the, the way he talks to the players, the way he talks to the press. It's really important in these times as well that you can handle the press as well when you're in, in the papers or on television every day. And I think he's uh, preparing his uh, work really well uh, as well. And yeah. uh, players, if we listen, to him, we, we believed him, you know, he was always leading the team in a way, he never criticized players in front of the, yeah. uh, in front of the media, so he criticized inside and uh, we believed what he was saying and uh, that makes him really, really special. So, given the leadership skills of Jose Mourinho, why do you think he had to go? Because he had not the right results. It's a normal, natural process in a, f in a football team. If you don't have the right results, uh, the weakest part of the team is mostly the coach, uh, even if it's Jose Mourinho. And he has such a high reputation. Comes to a point where the board uh, has to make a decision also to show to the players it's enough. And yeah, uh, we have to course. change something. And like I said, uh, the coach mostly is the weakest person. I think that's why they went different ways. And now in terms of counter examples, in terms of coaches that probably weren't great leaders, do you have an example of probably a big fight you had with a coach or someone that you didn't think you got along well with? Yeah, I could, not me alone, but also the, with the coach together, we could make it differently because it was not nice, you know, after so many years playing for Germany, uh, after an injury which I picked up just before the World Cup, yeah. um, with 33, um, I want to come back and he never really gave me the chance to to be captain again, to lead that team, which I gave so much for nearly 12 years. And that was a situation which uh, I was really frustrated because, like I mentioned, he didn't give me the chance to come back. Or he didn't even to spoke him? to me 
really open what his thoughts or why he's doing another decision. It's not about okay. going a different way as a coach. He's responsible for the team and um, yeah. to go a different way is, is totally okay. But like I said, we had a, a long relationship and we knew each other yeah. for more than six, seven years. And uh, I could at least expect uh, a very open, private um, discussion about okay. my future. Looking at the future, do you think you would coach a team? Maybe. Not yet, because it was a long and uh, tough time as a player. We saw you cry on the football pitch. Do you think being emotional is a positive or a negative when you're a leader, when you're a captain of a team? No, it's not negative, because I think uh, we all have emotions and a, a passion. And uh, sport is emotional, you know, for the fans as much as for, the, for, the, for ourselves. So uh, when you lose a big, big game, um, you can... Uh, you can cry, it makes Obviously. you more uh, human and um, shows your personality. It has nothing yeah. to do with that you're tough or a hard player. Could you share with us a great or emotional moment you had at some point in your career? Oh, I had many emotional moments, to be honest, but because um, I played in, in a lot of big games for, for the club and for the national team. But of course, the World Cup is always something really special. And um, yeah, I remember in Korea, and the World Cup 2002 in the semi-final. Uh, it was 0-0, 70 minutes around, and um, yeah, I got the second yellow card, so I knew I would be suspended for the final, and I was really, really disappointed, but uh, I thought, okay, I have 20 minutes left in this tournament. I want to give everything for my team, and um, yeah, I could score the 1-0, the winner, so it was a big win for us. Everyone yeah. was happy, but in the same time, I realized I can't play the biggest game, obviously, in the, in the world for for a football player at the final. That was really, really disappointed for me in that moment, uh, even if I scored. But yeah, the positive and negative is really close yeah. to each other sometimes. And do you think that Germany could have won the final had you played against Brazil, given that you actually scored the decider at both the semi-final and the quarter-final? Oh, many people asked me that question or told me maybe we, we would win. I, I don't know. I mean, I was... Maybe I had my best year in 2002, uh, one of my best years, not, if not the best. And uh, yeah, I scored the semi-final, the 1-0 and the quarter-final as well. So of course I was confident, I was in a great shape, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> and you were actually one of the top goal scorers. You scored 41 goals for your national team. What do you think you could have improved in your game? No, I was not the quickest, so maybe if I would be a little bit more quicker. Career-wise, what would you have done differently? I don't like to look back and think I've done something wrong. I mean, the last move from Chelsea to Leverkusen, maybe I should not do because uh, I was really happy at Chelsea. Maybe oh. I should extend my contract for a year oh. because I was asking for two years and they just, want, they just offered me one year, so and I was 33 already. And you know when you're getting older, then you have to think maybe in the future a little bit longer. So I would maybe do that different. That's the only move you would have I would stayed do slightly longer different. at Chelsea probably. But can you tell us a funny story that happened probably, I don't know, in the dressing room? or? I mean, you can imagine if 30 players in the dressing room, there's a lot going on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we had always uh, funny moments when I remember the World Cup when uh, we won yeah. and uh, Angela Merkel was coming in to congratulate she us. She came in the dressing room. The media guy came, came in one minute before and he, and he mentioned mm. guys put the towel uh, uh, because Angela Merkel, the, ca the Chancellor, is coming in, as you know, 20, 30 stinky man, you're naked, uh, she don't want to see that, but uh, she was quite cool, you know, and was talking to us, was motivating us. You've been so successful. How do you spend your money now? Uh, now actually I can spend some money because when I was playing, I was not spending money a lot because I was playing football. You know, I'm interested in art since a long time and I like old cars, vintage cars. And how do you choose your artwork? Oh, There's a lot of research. I have uh, people around me, they, they help me. I mean, I'm interested really much. I'm traveling a lot. I go to exhibitions, to auctions. Um, but um, the most important thing for me is actually and interesting is to 
to meet the artists, to know something yeah. about them, to meet them personally, to get a good access to the to the actual art. So tell us, what's your best investment to date? My best investment? Yes. That's, mm, I think it was the, the time I spent, I invest in sport, yeah. you know, uh, to be honest, because, uh, and the team sport, to do a team sport. Uh, it kept me fresh in mind, but also my body. And it was important when I stopped playing that I, uh, I knew uh, I want to do sport even after my career, uh, because I love sport. Uh, not just football, and um, that's something um, I'm really grateful. And you also do some charity work? Um, since years, uh, one of the international ambassador from UNAIDS. Really? Uh, since seven, eight years. We have a great team, um, great organization. We travel to South Africa, to different places, to, to see people uh, and, and do something and make people aware. Michael? It's that time of the interview. I'm going to ask you a series of quick fire questions. You just have to answer really fast. Okay, I'll try. Um, so if you weren't Michael Balak, which football player would you be? Uh, maybe Maradona. Messi or Ronaldo? Mm, Messi. Guardiola or Mourinho? Mourinho because he was my coach. Which football player should Chelsea buy? Mm, Lewandowski. Which club would you have liked to play for that you haven't already played for? Uh, maybe Barcelona. What's your best quality in real life? I'm an honest person. What could you improve? To be a little bit calmer, less perfectionist sometimes. Mm. Would, would make my day a bit easier sometimes. <laughs> you won the Alfred Dunhill Golf Tournament as an amateur in 2015. Would you consider a career in golf? Maybe as a senior player? No, definitely not. I, I started too late. Do you think you look like Matt Damon? I look younger, I think. <laughs> Tell us something that nobody knows. I hate losing. I'm I mean, pretty sure a lot of people know that. I think so because I really hate it. Um, <laughs> who do you look up to? Uh, my dad. Who's your biggest inspiration these days? My kids. What final question do you want me to ask you? Uh, can we have dinner later? I was really hoping you'd ask that. Uh -huh. <laughs> It was such a great honor to talk to you and to discuss leadership, football and life after such a successful career. I know you don't do it often and you never discuss your private life, so I really appreciate it a lot.